Hey guys, welcome to the Think Fresh Move Forward podcast. Today we have Nick D and we're talking about how to make money as an independent artist as opposed to going with a label. We're also talking about how to grow a following on social media. Now a lot of we're talking, what we're talking about uh, implies being a music artist, but if you replace music artists with whatever it is that you're doing or interested in, it'll also apply to you. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay. All right. So today I'm super excited about our podcast. We have a uh, uh, we have a special guest, and what's really interesting, uh, if you don't know who Nick D is, you should look him up on uh, social platforms right now. Uh, he's big on TikTok, Spotify, um, Instagram. What else? That's your biggest. Biggest is probably <laughs> Spotify. Yeah. So what's really interesting about Nick is that uh, Nick represents a different type of artist, right? So there's, uh, and, and they've really, he's really found a way to be a successful uh, musician. And, and when, I'm, when I say successful, I mean like uh, being able to be profitable as a musician without a label, right? Uh, because social media really changed the world uh, in a lot of ways. And we're, we're still seeing the way it's, it's changing things. But like specifically, it changed things for, uh, for guys like you because you have a way to market yourself, uh, fund yourself, uh, run your uh, run your brand like a business without anyone telling you what you have to do. So there's no <clears throat> there's no middle manager that takes a few other than nope. maybe Spotify as the, an example. The only thing I have is a lawyer uh, for when big brand deals come, stuff like that. Okay. That's the only thing. Can you explain the, the, the difference between the process of what a typical artist goes through as far as the record labels say? You know, Jay Z or Beyonce, that sure. type of person, Taylor Swift, because sure. <clears throat> you hear all the horror stories about them and them their fights with the record labels, uh, and then um, the aspect as far as what you do. Yeah. So the I mean the climate is changing a little bit for the artists. A lot more powers in their hands, so they do have a little more leverage uh, to negotiate their deals better nowadays. But most artists. They sign a deal uh, on, on what is a typical, they take an advance. Let's call it a million bucks, right? They take an advance and they get a small percentage. They get about 18% typically on a standard industry deal. They'll get 18% of their music. Now they have to pay that million dollars back out of that 18%. So basically they never pay it back. So I'm assuming it's, it's that million plus hold interest. On. Hold on, hold on. So they... They get paid. They get fronted a million dollars to do. Sure, to take an advance. Basically, the artist sees it as I made it, right? When you get signed, it's still artist view getting signed as I made it, and they'll take the advance, right? A million dollars seems like a lot of money. Really, it's fifty percent in taxes, five percent to your lawyer, fifteen percent to your manager, and you walk away with like three hundred thousand. So it's really not that much money if you're smart then, about it. But then you yeah. still have to spend that money to do production work, and then. It, it depends how the deal is set up. Sometimes they give you also a marketing budget on top of that, or recording budget on top of that. Or I, I was, <clears throat> I watched a video. There's a YouTuber by the name of Jake Tran. I don't know if you guys, he does a lot of great breakdown videos, but he did one on the music industry where they say an artist gets signed a half a million dollars. That artist is going to have to make around 2.5 million in revenue to to pay back right. that 500 before he sees another. Now is that dime. a million yeah. the, like one year contract or is that just? I, is, they're all they're all. However, you negotiate it, sure. but usually it's on a basis of uh, an amount of albums or an amount of songs. It's not a, on a time frame basis. So if you get two albums that you agreed to, um, and what's the bummer is the labels in control of when those albums really come out. Interesting. So kind of a bummer. And the biggest thing though is when artists don't own their music. Like I own my music. Oh. When artists don't own their music, most artists, signed artists, don't. They they sign for that 18%. They sign their masters away, which means the ownership of that tangible music, that tangible Everything song. Everything they do is not theirs anymore. They don't own it. That's wild. Um, That's wild. And they're getting that 18%. They have to pay back their advance out of the 18%. So that means the record label is making 82% on the side off their music as they're paying them back. Now, typically what happens is they'll renegotiate another deal to keep the artist in debt. So they keep the artist in debt the whole time. So the artist never makes money off their music, most artists. So that's why you see all these artists that have to tour 
They have to push merchandise. They have to push these brand deals because that's how they have to make their money because they don't own their music. When you're independent, I own all my music. So when I do 150 million streams this year, that all goes to me. It doesn't go to anybody. I don't have to tour. I don't have to push <laughs> merch. I don't have to you so, know, do this stuff. I'm 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 still reeling a little bit from they don't own their own music and yeah. so and, and, most, and I, wild. most no I, like I said the climate's changing to where there's a little more leverage in the artist's hands for I know a guy who did a two million deal fifty fifty and they own their master mm. so there's still like if you have enough leverage you can get so it depends yeah. on how much clout and how powerful you are from yeah. the because there's another standpoint. avenue now right like because if like, I were to go get a deal right now I could get fifty fifty a few million and so own my music the, hmm. the, what's the so what's the pro then of going with a record label versus someone doing obviously if you do it solo you own all your music but when yeah. you go with a record label then you have yeah what, what you have a whole you, you do have a business yeah, what's the pros and cons what you do have a business machine that's there i would say yeah. to help you schedule all these sure. uh concerts and tours and all that stuff when if you try to do that yourself which might be you're going to be inundated with you know business work and yeah. not creating content or music so What's the pros and cons to it? It really all boils down to your goal for your career. I have a family. I'm married. I got two kids. I don't want to tour. I'm not a touring artist. Uh, I might do little things here and there, but my goal is not to tour. So when I think of a record label and their connections with touring, their connections with getting me on stage with Post Malone or whoever, right? It doesn't appeal to me because that's not my goal, right? Um, my goal is to do something I love, provide for my family, and be close to home. Um, now, the pros, if you're self-aware enough as an artist to know I don't have the motivation or the drive to push myself to create content every day to blow myself up. If you're self-aware enough to know that, then maybe your best bet is to go find a team, right? And take the hit on the percentage and have them try to blow you up. Now, here's the problem. Most artists are like... Uh, to throw some at the wall, see if they stick for labels, right? Like you think of a Republic. If someone who's just starting a music science to Republic and Republic tries to push you out there and it doesn't work, they'll just shelf you because they have their Drake, their Post, their Ariana Grande. They have their heavy hitters. They're just trying to see if something else will work. And when you don't, they're on to the next thing. Mm. And it's not that you wouldn't work eventually, but they don't care enough to keep trying, right? There's so many artists out there now especially with tiktok or reels mm. or youtube shorts where they come across them like let's see if they stick let's see if they stick let's see if they stick and when you don't they'll just move to the next one so you got to think about that as well when you're uh deciding whether or not you want to be signed but the pros and cons the the cons are you do everything yourself you are the accountant you mm -hmm. are the content creator you're the editor you're the songwriter you're the all that stuff well i, I actually control. kind of argue with that because i think that, in my opinion that'd be a pro to mine because depends on your personality right for me i like, love every bit of it well it yeah like, but the controlling then controlling that but again it comes down to how much money you make because then if you sign a deal and you don't have any business acumen and yeah. you just sure. sign it because you're attracted oh it's a million dollars oh i've made it one million dollars is not a lot of money no. it, especially after taxes again, 300k it, it, right. it, it comes down to what is uh, perception is reality so if you've never had money of course a million dollars right. sounds like a lot but once you start working with a ton of money a million dollars ain't shit that quick. stuff will go by quick yep. so um <laughs> it, it's just understanding uh to one be patient and then have a lawyer always read over that's obviously on your side yep. to read over the contract that's the biggest thing is not reading contracts will get you screwed over or if you don't understand verbatim what that language is in said contract so mm -hmm. um Again, it, it's pros and cons, but sure. understanding what it is you're signing. Are you signing your life away? Yeah. So so let me ask you this. Uh, what um, – whenever you start something, right, you don't always know what your what your goals are, right? So what what was your – how how have things changed for you, like, uh, since the beginning? Like, you said you your goal was to, you know – have your family and and like and and to to be able to not tour to be able to make those decisions and that's mm -hmm. uh, uh what at what point did things begin to change or did did, did you want to go a, uh, a label route like have you always wanted to go the route that you're going right now or did you just by exposure see these things um i always knew that i wanted to be independent now mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure everyone has a number right everyone 
if you you're like no nah, nah, nah. but then you somebody <laughs> puts that in front of you, you're like well you know i might <laughs> you know like was so, you cheating your girlfriend for a billion dollars <laughs> yeah damn right i was <laughs> I just, I just mean, you get cheated on for free <laughs> <laughs> everyone has a number um but no when i started i always knew i wanted to be independent my main goal is to have a flexible life all the other stuff is bonuses right um and when you start to see income right and i'm a very business minded how i approach the music so um it's not that I don't care about making money. I do. But my main goal is to have a flexible life. Um, and when it comes to goals, most people, when they set goals, they don't give them a deadline, right? They're one day, somehow's, could be, maybes, mm-hmm. uh, possibles. So I set goals on a yearly basis, usually. My first uh, goal for my first year, 2019, was 10,000 Instagram followers and a million total streams, right? And that year I put out a song every two weeks with a music video. So 24 music videos in one year, 24 singles. Uh, consistency is kind of everything. Did you shoot all those music videos yourself? At the beginning I was. And then I met a friend, Cakes, who you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and he started shooting them for me for free. He just I shot one of those. In. You shot one. Um, the one you did was really good. Uh, this is a different one, actually. Yeah, he oh, shot two, okay. yeah. Um, so, you know, everyone that just kind of like believed in what was happening... Uh, got behind, got behind it. Um, so anyway, I hit the ten thousand Instagram followers in like June or July, and at the end of the year, I had thirty thousand. I hit my yearly stream goal, and then the next year was financial goal. It was make enough money making music to where if I had to stop everything else, I could take care of my family. Off and of what was the everything else? Uh, so I own a media company, uh, photography and cinematography, which you do most of the cinematography now. Um. So for context, for people who don't know who you are, yeah. you had a photography and videography yeah. business doing weddings, photo yeah. shoots, stuff like that. That's yeah, what. tourism, photos, videos, uh, marketing for small businesses, family sessions, engagement sessions. Now you're in a spot where you're not doing that anymore. Yeah, I'm stepping away. I um, sold it to Aaron. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> stepping away. Um, <clears throat> and what made, you, what made you want to switch that? And I know this is kind of a, l- a little bit off topic, but I, yeah. I, what, I mean – Originally, I always had an interest in music. Now, I've been with my wife since we were 16, and music is a little bit more high risk as far as taking care of your family. Yeah. So I had the conversation with her. It wasn't something that was making sense for our family at the time, so I built the photo business, um, which was, then it became consistent, provided for our family for years. And then uh, I, I came to her and I said, hey, do you mind if I push this music thing, I think I can do it, as well as the photography. Gave it a shot. COVID came around. Wedding stopped, mm. which gave me full time on to work on music. And yep. during that time, uh, because where you put your energy is what's going to grow. Yep. yep. Um, oh, gosh. That's that's a that's a archetypal, if I can use it, Jordan Arch- Peterson. Arch- 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 archetypal? Archetypal? Yeah, archetypal? If I can use a Jordan <laughs> Peterson word, that is an archetypal truth. The thing that you feed is the thing that's yeah. going to grow. Yeah. I just never heard that word before. Archetypal. Ar- archetypal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when I put, you know, and I, and I know these things, but it's hard to get my wife and I have different personalities. She's a a realist. She's a, show me the receipts. She's a, you know, and I'm like, trust me. (laughs) (laughs) The clouds flying. I I could do it. it. I could do it. (laughs) I could beat a giraffe. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, anyway, when I was able to show her the receipts of, Hey, this is how much money I made in October Mm -hmm. from just music. Do you mind if I make music priority photo second? And she said, sure, go ahead. Two days after that, I wrote uh, my song, Fine Apple, which was my first song to go viral. It charted top 40 hit radio. um, And it would like right now it has maybe 40 something million streams on Spotify. Um, one of my, yeah. one of my biggest moments came from me deciding to put all my energy into music. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the journey to get there, this is kind of referencing the last podcast. You were willing to work for free. Oh yeah. That's the, that's the biggest thing we talk when it comes to entrepreneurship. Almost is, spending money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. You're spending money <laughs> to, to yeah. get people to listen to yeah. you. It's Especially like, when your effort is worth money. But yeah. there's a misconception that some people have as far as what they think they're worth because they compare themselves to others. So the second Man. they start a business, a job, 
music that they yeah. sh- they should be paid immediately. And like, sorry, that's just not how it works. You yeah. have to prove your worth. And obviously, you've done that. Uh, but you have to be willing to take that sacrifice. Yeah. Um, and it just makes it a lot harder when you have a significant other, <laughs> like yeah, you said, yeah. someone to show the receipts. Yeah, this is how much money I spent. Not how much <laughs> I got. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I think there's more drive under it, too, because you have the kids, and it's like, if I fail, like, it's not just me messing up either. Yeah. No. But see, when he said he went to it full time, mm-hmm. though, it's you have more motivation. Oh, when definitely. You're, when yeah, you're yeah. doing something part time and it's not your sole livelihood, mm-hmm. the motivation's not there. Yeah. Versus, mm-hmm. like, if I don't make it, my kids starve. Yep. That's a totally different motivator. Versus that's like, the thing is pe- too often people give themselves a plan B, and that's just an excuse not to follow through with plan A. I've never really believed in plan B because, like I said, it just gives you an opportunity to give up when if you were to just continue you can, with – You should quote that. Well, I mean, Will, <laughs> I mean, that's Will a, that's Smith, a good quote. Will Smith that's has said quote. that. The and, Rock has said that. Unless, unless, said unless, burn the bridges, man. Okay. Yeah, unless yeah, you're jumping out of an airplane, you got to have that reserve chute, man. I mean, because, you know, <laughs> 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 uh, that's a totally yeah. Well, have the safety net, right? right? Like, plan financially. But, like, the plan B is, like, having that contingency of, oh, I have this other job lined up. And it just like, always, no. for me, comes down to how bad do you want it. Most people yeah, don't absolutely. want it bad enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're not willing to risk that right they're they're afraid to risk that what makes you want to take the risk is it just like blind optimism is it just like belief in yourself A delusional self-belief <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Delusional I, I love it yeah i, I, I know it. what you mean yeah. yes <laughs> my wife was pregnant with our uh with our first kid and i was working at starbucks and uh and i was just like I was just like, yeah, I can do this. Like, yeah. I, it never even entered my mind that, like, nah. maybe this wouldn't work. And she nah. was like, maybe you should take a job at Amazon. I was like, nah, we got nah. this. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. And now look at you. <laughs> Forced affirmations yeah. almost in a way. You, you have to. Mm-hmm. You have to. No one cares till everybody does. So what do you? What would you say to someone who is uh, uh, maybe l- more risk uh, averse? Specific to musicians. Yeah, what do you, what do you say to them? I you know, w- w- I mean, because because you know, th- there's personality that plays into this. Absolutely, know, definitely. and and there are people who, who are are very sensitive, way more sensitive to negative emotion, and and are way more yeah. sensitive especially, to that feeling of those feelings of disappointment, yeah. especially the people around you, because that will definitely negate as far as which direction you take. Yeah, man, it really comes down to being self-aware. If you know that you cannot function if you read a negative comment. Mm. Like if you know it shuts you down and it's gonna make you like, oh, you, you gotta, should you not be, be tough. You gotta, yeah, you, you have gotta to be. be tough. A thick skin, have but, a thick skin. But but if you yep. know like you're self aware enough to know, if I read that comment, like I'm gonna quit. You almost you need to be stubborn in a way for uh, to ignore that. Or you gotta have somebody managing your social media. Which in that case, if you're like you said, if you're self aware, you're not. If you think you're not built to run everything yourself, maybe test yeah, a delegate. label route. Yeah. Or build a team on your own yep. on the yeah. side. I'll be the creative, hire other people to yeah. take everything else. And yeah. a lot of it's people, just like any business. when I give advice, people get sometimes frustrated with me because they're like, you're taking the art out of whatever. And I'm like, I'm not trying to teach you how to be, you know, the most creative artist that you want. I'm not trying to tell you what you want for your career. I'm just teaching you how to make money and how to run your small business, your music, you know, your music small business. You are the product. Yeah. Well, you know. and so that's that's uh that's interesting. So you we we've talked about what you've done, right? And you've you've clearly like you've had you've had some amazing success. So let's talk a little bit about the the how. Like so when you said you were setting these goals, mm-hmm. what was the primary tools you were using? Early on, the first year was <clears throat> music videos and releasing being consistent. Consistency and content is key. Mm. Um so First year was that I did do a small budget. I ran some back end Facebook real ads, which I studied, um, targeted, you know, only did Instagram swipe up, gave no chance for someone to uh, <clears throat> leave comments on it. Because Instagram swipe up is the only ads I ran at the beginning. And I had like a, you know, a 150 budget per song, $150 budget per song. And if the songs were performing well, then maybe I'd feed it a little more. Um, and not a great conversion. I had some songs convert for like two cents a click, which is very good uh, as far as music goes. And you'd swipe up, it'd take you directly to Spotify, and the song would start playing. Now, the way I would target it was I would target it first to only people who have mentioned, interest, liked, or interacted with Spotify. 
because that's the link I was sending them to. Mm. I, w- I didn't do people who liked music. I did Spotify. Mm. Who do, you, do you like music? Oh, yeah, the whole yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. but the if someone audience. might, yeah, yeah, someone might swipe up and listen on Apple or listen on Title or listen on Amazon, and then they don't have access to play that song. So I did Spotify only, and then I did the sub interests of mm-hmm. maybe a similar artist. Or, so you were you were you were definitely measuring and 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 watching, right? We we talk I, I talk we talk about that a, a bit. Like you have to be measuring, or you're not. You have no idea if you're if you're succeeding or not. Um. So you were you were you were trying different things, mm-hmm. or or doing pretty much the same thing, or no? I was always testing, always testing. Mm-hmm. Um. So when I you know I had that first year, didn't have crazy growth. Instagram did good growth. Um. But as far as you know, really getting, I hit my goals. But then when TikTok really started coming around, I switched and still only believe in short form content. Um, I do not think a music video is going to blow your song up. I don't think you should invest in music videos unless uh, the song earns one, right? So you're you're doing your short form content mm-hmm. and you're promoting your 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 original music on TikTok, on Reels, on Shorts. Um, then when a song has a moment, you know it it earns a music video. It what's, earns more content. What's that level for you then? That what garners a Man. A full on scale production of a music video, and then what scale is that production? Right. <clears throat> a lot of these, um, when it, I've learned or heard that when it comes to these music videos, some of these big artists they spend three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Um, and the label produ- spending that, by the way, and they're keeping the artists in debt. Yeah. So <laughs> one that I think honestly, one to spend that much money on a, and you see some of these videos. And like, oh, you spent 300 k I'm like, I don't see how that costs 300 k yeah. I see how the studio that designed that just upcharged the hell out of yeah. cause just because they can. Well, you know what's what's interesting about that is I just I, I watched a video uh, of a producer who uh, was start was was calculating costs of a music video that he was watching. You right? know the icy pop video? Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. This is wild. Uh, <laughs> tell us. Tell us. Uh, do you want to tell it? You know about it. Go ahead. Okay. So. One of the so one of his best videos, I think maybe his best video, uh, is uh, is Icy Pop, right? And it's, it's it looks like a highly produced video. Looks like they had a full scale art department. Looks like they had a construction crew building <laughs> rooms. And I was just like, because I saw, when I first saw, it, I was like, Nick, when did you decide to spend half a million dollars <laughs> on a music video? Uh, and then uh, I talked to him, and like I, I don't know, there's something to be said about Nick's creativity because I, what 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 was the spend on it? Uh, I bought so a I bought an eight hundred dollar light. <laughs> so if you minus the eight hundred dollar light, it was like six to eight hundred bucks I spent on the video. <laughs> it's wild. Go watch it, and you're gonna be like, how is this? And you this use much your money? phone for a camera? No, 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 no. 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 Cakes. No, my buddy shot it. Um, Cakes shot it. Cakes is awesome. Yeah, yeah, he did. He he was shooting on a one DX. Um, actually, you, if you wanted to pull yeah, it, yeah, can up, you bring up? The oh video? yeah, this is worth. Yeah, this is worth Icy seeing. <clears throat> um, now Icy Pop, so a Fine Apple went viral, and Icy Pop was my next song back from Fine Apple. So I wanted to come back with. Is a bang. A TikTok better to find this? No, video? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Okay. So um, and it's just Icy Pop. I I C E E. Yep, right there, Nick. Um. Yeah, so that's it. There you go. All right. Uh, so this is my first song back, which I I came back with a music video. Usually I don't, but I wanted to come back from a viral song, you know, a top forty hit song, and come back with a bang. So I, this is what I came back with, and just play a couple snippets of it, and you'll see like, and I'll tell you how I did it on a budget. So that's that's really expensive, typically. Just that little shot there. Wait, you spent eight hundred dollars on this? What? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. All these people are my are these, friends. Well, okay, I was gonna ask. All these people are my friends. The dancers, I spent four hundred bucks on. I gave them each a hundred okay. bucks. I gave them each a hundred bucks. They're students at Liberty University. Where was the shot at? Yeah, that's the key, right? That's the thing. I rented out uh, one of those selfie studios in the mall for like two hundred bucks. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I came in before they opened. Uh, and it's in Tyson's. And they have all these rooms already built. And I bought the light, which is why the shots look clean. Yeah. Um, 
And then, pops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so the, the biggest thing, you, pause it real quick. Yeah. Everything you just told, while well, you described this, is the one thing that you have, and you would probably agree with this, is resourcefulness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's the key to a lot of yes. things, is taking the time out to figure the shit out. If you don't have the money, how can you make this yeah. work? And you just described it. I, I would never have thought this is, you said Tyson's Corner? Tyson's, and yeah. Yeah, that's what. And See, most hour, people well, depend on traffic. If it's but, important to you, find a way. If it's not, right. you find an excuse. Most oh, people, man. Oh, there's a quote. Ooh. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> like two during this podcast. <laughs> that's a short. Yeah. <laughs> most people just find an excuse to not do it. You know, they're like, I can't afford it. I'm like, so the biggest thing is that statement, right? A question will open your mind a solution. A statement will shut it down. I can't afford it. Shuts down your mind. How can I afford it? Opens the door for solutions. Sounds like All right, Mr. So, uh, Robert Kiyosaki. So to backtrack a bit, so what is the point a song <laughs> takes in order for you to make a video? Is it how many? Is it a certain amount of plays? Oh, on um, so is it a half a million? I, I always think about my investment into it. How many streams do I need to make that money back? Right. That's how I. So literally, the how I tan make that tangible is my budget originally for a song recording. Blah blah. Record, record myself, mix, master, cover art, uh, whatever. 250 bucks was my original budget per song and I knew I needed like 50,000 streams to break even on that. So literally a million streams is give or take $4,000. Uh, Apple Music a million streams is $6,000. Spotify a million streams is like $3,700. Just depends on the platform people are listening. But give or take a million streams is like four. So if you don't want me to ask it then, uh, when you brought up, would go to Spotify real quick just to context you're getting about 27 uh, sorry 2.7 million yeah monthly so I, I you're do making about, about six seven k a month then from spotify no that's monthly listeners so that's accounts so i do about 14 million streams on spotify a month and i do about wow. i do about three million on apple music Whew. Uh, and apple pays you six thousand per million wow yeah um and i own my music yeah. so if you want to do math you can do math i own my music it all comes to me um, That's so the biggest positive is and then of course music. yeah yeah uh, and that didn't play but I'm assuming you monetize on YouTube as well yeah monetize on YouTube um, YouTube is probably your uh, your least oh by far attended by far least attended least do you plan money. on growing that platform uh, I want to uh, you're at 71,000 subscribers yeah one of my goals since I was a kid was to have a YouTube play button so I need that hundred thousand on there. You're, you're almost there. <laughs> I need that's that hundred thousand. That's the silver play button. Yeah, silver one. Yeah. And then a million's gold, and then ten yeah. million is the next one, which is the diamond play button. Yeah. What does P PewDiePie have? He has. It's a special one made yeah. literally just for just him. For him. Yeah. It the, it looks weird, but um, it's wild. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you can see like just icy pop. Twenty one million. Twenty seven. Twenty seven million. million. Oh, that is a seven. And just <clears> ti <throat> times that by four thousand, and you can see what one song was able to do. Um, mm. Okay. So, so is, this, so, is no. this monthly listens? No, that's total. This is that's total. total monthly okay. listeners is unique accounts. Okay. That I've listened. So well, I mean, one person could listen to your whole catalog. Right. One person could listen to you every day. One right. person can. So it just you know. So let me ask you this: Who? So you you grew all this, and and you know it was a lot of it was attention. Did you forge this path on your own, or were you, did you have some help? Did you no. did, were people giving you advice? No, nope. I was winging it the whole time. And you know what's crazy? Uh, so I, I get label inquiries, right? Labels would, they would mm -hmm. like to sign me, but what's, what's kind of, uh, I don't know the word for it. So I have people that friends that work at labels, friends that are signed now labels and marketing teams are bringing me up in their conversations with their artists and telling them to watch how I'm doing it. Emulate. Which only confirms that artists don't need labels. Labels need artists. Mm. <laughs> that's interesting yeah that's wild so if that would be that would be just a to me that sounds like the most atrocious thing in the world for someone to sign up with a label and then be like all right do what this guy does except now we have all your literally, money and all your songs literally Whew. now Ooh, now that would one, be a punch to the gut one thing that labels have is a small chance of taking your song global nothing mm -hmm. is guaranteed Nothing about a label is guaranteed, just like nothing independent is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I did take Icy Pop to a label. There's a small chance that song could have 400 million streams. 
instead of 30 million streams, right? But how much of it would I own? Mm-hmm. Am I going to You get a bigger to... pie. So yeah, it's it's like um you might have a bigger pie. Right. You might end up with more money, but then you might You not. might. You might. You might not. Then you have and if, and if it doesn't, covers it, on your song too, as well, you don't own the music. And if that doesn't happen, you definitely don't have as yeah, much money. It's a terrible not. business deal. <laughs> it really yeah, is. And, but the thing and is, for that reason, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always just chose to bet on myself. Um, now, like I said, if you're self aware enough, you know you're not about it. You, labels deals are still okay mm-hmm. if you know that you're just not the guy or the girl to push yourself hard enough. To yeah. Do. I mean, do you get a benefit um, like your own? When you sign a label, do they provide a sound studio, or do you still have to pay that That's out of pocket? That's the thing, though. Like, they give you budget, but why? I recorded, right. like, 50 songs in the back of my minivan. <laughs> Literally. Awesome. I, I put a, I built a little desk. They had an outlet in the back of my Honda Odyssey. They have an outlet in the back. I folded the seats down. I built a little desk back there, and I would record. And it's great for sound. I would record in the back of my minivan. I did 50 masters in the back of that, and now I have a studio... You know, that's sure. mine. Yeah, I have yeah. a nicer microphone. I have all this stuff. Um, but I just, rec- I mean, if you just one YouTube video, you can learn how to record yourself. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's, so it's the, the availability of information because of YouTube has yeah. changed my life. Yeah. Um, but that much information, like I said, it's uh, a lot of business or entrepreneurs who are new uh, who don't take action on things and they just keep learning, thinking that they have to keep educating themselves but actually yeah. don't do anything in yeah information oil. is not transformation analysis yeah. paralysis is yep. talk about the people who keep buying like the courses the people who keep going mm. to the seminars the master class mm. how many courses you, how many courses do you buy uh i bought one course oh yeah on facebook back-end marketing okay because I, I was ignorant yeah it. tell and me and the youtube it? videos were shit's always a ni- shit's a nightmare <laughs> The YouTube videos are always an hour long, an hour twenty. I want. I bought a specific how to market your music, on, mm-hmm. uh, and it was fine. I didn't finish it. I got what I needed to know in the first, you know, two sections of it. So it was like a thousand dollar course. Um, Ooh, wow! But that paid off. It paid. Off, it paid off. Yeah. And but you didn't keep buying thousand dollar courses. To uh, think, no, because no, people just use one. people use that as a level of success. Like I'm ticking off. Like the to-do yeah. checklist, I'm checking off all the boxes, For me, and it does nothing. If I can get to my information faster, what I what do I need to know? If I can get there faster, it's worth the money for me. So I knew I was going to be spending too long searching YouTube for the right video, skimming through these hour-long videos. So I bought a course mm-hmm. that was how to market your music on... Got what you needed, yes, utilized it, the optimized point. it. Yeah. And I don't yeah. market... I don't pay for... Ad, I haven't paid for ads since... Tw- like early 2020 i haven't paid for an ad and so let me uh so there's and there, there's a couple there's a couple things you're doing here and so uh now that you since you've kind of forged your own path you like you kind of know where it is and and now you've started another business mm, helping other yeah. musicians along yeah. that path yeah and so but you're not i i take it you're not you're not acting as a record label you're actually no. are you you're acting co- as as someone throwing a rope are down. you selling a, a course or like a coach slash mentor type thing uh i i want to start with the course i don't want to use my time all the time on zoom calls and so i want to i'm going to create a course and now here's the thing this is there's courses out there for for music now the difference is uh there's one guy who's doing it he blew up 10 years ago Everything's different. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's guys out there selling courses who are just recycling information, right? They're doing research, compiling it, and saving you time by selling you a course so you don't have to look for the information. I'm in the middle of it. I'm still doing it every day. I'm still posting videos. I'm still creating songs. I'm still growing. So if there's a guy that you want to learn from, it's the guy that's literally doing it right now. Yeah. So that's why, and I want to make that available for people. I would love to find a way to keep it free for the independent artists and sell my services to labels. I would love to find a way to do that, but for now, it's like it's uh, it's not something you can differentiate. That could always right. be a version 2.0. Right. Yeah. But for now, it's like we're gonna create this course. Uh, I wrote a book, like things like that. I'll put it out. Would there. you do it as like um? You sell the course for a thousand bucks or a monthly of like forty nine. I would love to do something on the monthly, but for now, uh, it's a three part course. One is um, 
the the beginner beginner stuff how to record yourself where to find an affordable setup right that section another section is how to market the other section is how to run it like a you know run it like a like a small business how to get your llc how to blah blah what's that business called just in case there's musicians that are looking to independent take out the vowels independent Independent media is there a domain for that uh probably but yeah, I think you should do the the monthly route, and I'll use. An I would example. love to. I'll use yeah. an example. So, <clears throat> if you're on YouTube at all, you guys may have noticed this guy Andrew Tate has yeah. come out yeah. of nowhere. Hustlers University. Smart. Yeah, Hustlers University. Yeah, Fifty bucks. Uh, well, it used to be uh, to sign up for it was ten thousand dollars to buy his all his courses and stuff. He's a more of like a self help guy for yeah. men. Uh, on the very masculine type of spectrum, mm-hmm. he's very out. He very. I like the guy a lot. He's really. I like his stuff, but. Um, he switched over to a monthly of forty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. He has eighty seven thousand yep. students yep. active. Just yep. do the math. Yeah, it's yep. four four or Even five million dollars a month in revenue. Yep. Even on a right smaller, scale. he was already rich. I'd be alright with that. Yeah, already rich. I yeah, he has casinos this in Romania. <laughs> and, uh, you should, his story is insane. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, but I think the monthly route because he realized then you can reach a broader audience because then you might yeah. get the people who are. Are not so serious. Yep. Uh, who are willing to pay the fifty? Yep. Versus you weed out a lot of people when you do a thousand dollar course. The, the biggest thing for me would be how to continue to add value month after month after month, right? Like, right. And I'm sure I could because everything's constantly changing and, mm-hmm. and moving. But, um, but you create a community that way. Yes, and and that's the other side is I want. Right, it's all this out there right now, but like some sort of Discord where. They are able to post their content, and there's a community that will give them feedback before they post it online. Like, this is what mm. you could have done better. And there's a section where the admins, like myself, Connor, who was supposed to be here, um, can how do, go in and provide that. How does that work for copyright then? Uh, I'm just curious. So like, if, if someone posts something, and it, you're getting a ton of other artists' feedback that another artist takes the song and... Oh, like, takes the... Yeah. How does that work? I, I, I don't know how that... Yeah. Is that even a thing? I don't I don't think it would be a thing. But I I do know that because everything's like dated nowadays on your computers and stuff if right. you were if you can prove, prove that it was the first guy to post it, you know, I don't think it would come to that, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you uh you have the so you're offering basically this rope to other other musicians and yeah. like trying to get them with real value, like yeah. practical, not like Yeah, and that's and that's fluff. really interesting, right? Not a lot fluff. of fluff not because fluff. Not you've fluff. connected to an audience that it seems like every client that we talk to wants to connect with mm. and and like they just like it's it's so difficult right because you're you're what is what is your primary demographic would you say uh it's like between 18 and 34 18 and 34 i remember when we were shooting your video in jacksonville we couldn't walk 50 feet in the mall oh, without yeah. you getting stopped like yeah. and it, se- it seems like you have like certain areas that are yeah, uh, like more condensed in the cities, it'll be yeah. like Vegas is pretty. Like you find bad. that annoying yeah. or exciting? No, I, I I like it, I really do, um, cause they're very nice. Like these people are very nice. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm not like drawing crowds. Like, you know, I'm not like The Rock. Yeah, it's, like, it's a lot of selfies. Oh, the Rock, yeah. The Rock stands out in a crowd. Just, <laughs> just to like, be honest, just like you know, like your A-listers. Right. And I don't have a desire to be an A-lister. Um, so it's not really an inconvenience. It's just like, hey, dude, I love your stuff. You mind if I get a picture? I'm like, yeah, dude, let's do it. You know? Glad you're one of those people, not like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, but the other thing that you have going on is, and you're 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 using these same methods, I'm assuming, with ever with all three of these different entities that you oh, have, because yeah. your third yeah. entity that we haven't talked about yet is your is your podcast, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. is awesome. If you're looking for a comedy podcast that's like <laughs> hilarious, it's like it's like a, it's like a few guys just like hanging out uh mm-hmm. like that's it's it's awesome highly it, recommend the Fred, more the Freddy about, show what's the topic what do you guys usually talk on right? absolutely I mean, nothing absolutely Bro, nothing <laughs> just like, absolutely i mean you like if you click on it I'll, I'll explain how this helped me grow my music so here's what happened so i did fine apple went viral right i did three months where i didn't release music uh while fine apple was re- really being pushed pretty heavily so we started this now this blew up very quickly. Got like a million followers in the first two months. Um, now, what this did was, and I never cross-promote. I never cross-promote podcasts on my music. I never cross-promote music on my podcast. What's the reason for that? 
Uh, I don't want to ever be that guy. I think it's more valuable when somebody, people it's care more when they focused. find it instead of when you tell them about it. That's really interesting. So Never thought of that. when I'm on here, right, and people see me, they're like, I love that dude. I love his personality. I just like that guy. And then my music page comes up for them, and they're like, I didn't know you made music. They already like me as a person, so they become instantly a fan mm. instead of I like that song, keep scrolling. So they they related the the personality of me on this show with my music. And I think it helped my music grow that much faster because people related to me as a human being instead of like as this unattainable, untouchable like artist guy. Right. Yeah, I think and I think that's maybe one of the keys keys to success with your demographic, right? I think that I think that people in the eighteen to thirty five demographic are sick of fake oh yeah they want authenticity that's very easy to tell yeah they want you get really good at it when you spend hours and i'll, I'll give you two examples of a-listers that did it uh tory lanes is a hip-hop slash r&b artist he was already big like i don't know five uh five million followers on instagram and during quarantine he did a radio show on instagram live quarantine radio and it was just him bringing in other celebrities and they were just messing around anyway took him 10 years to get five million followers it took him quarantine to get the next five hmm. because he wasn't pushing his music. He wasn't doing anything. He was just his personality in the live gained all those followers. Another guy, DJ Khaled. Uh, he another was, one. Another one. So the reason he <laughs> got back popping again was Snapchat. He was posting every day on Snapchat, you know, good morning, sun is shining. What's up? And uh, people were like, yo, you see DJ Khaled? Like, he gets my day started right. <laughs> you know, and people like love DJ Khaled. He wasn't talking about his music. He was riding jet skis. He was doing whatever. It's being a normal person. Being a normal person. Yeah. And he blew him up. I say this to every business owner, <sighs> humanizing the brand. That's yeah. literally what you're doing. Yeah. 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 We even even down to the script level when we're when we're scripting like uh uh if someone's doing, you know, whatever kind of video, we always, always gear toward like conversational tone and not being not yeah. trying to sound like an ad because like yeah. people are yeah. sick of it like you know you grow up with it, it it's just like it's not real it's in your face. Face. and it doesn't matter what it. you say it doesn't matter like the words that you craft carefully yeah. if it's not genuine it just won't go because once you're inundated it with it so many times your mind gets really used to tuning it out it so it's like a lot of people don't realize but almost every human person when they're on their internet on the right side of the screen is automatically blind to what they like mm. usually because ads are always on the right side mm. but now you become so desensitized to it you actually don't even see mm -hmm. anything there that's why they don't put many ads there as much um because that side of the screen mm. is irrelevant but literally that's what marketing yeah. has done so it's essentially now moving to this and now you watch so much fake content and you're just like eh, the, the biggest problem i see with people now you can do it with music you can do it with product is they're telling people about it. Like, I'll, you come across a video like, hey, this is my song. Okay, scroll. You know, like, no one cares, right? Hey, this is my part. No one cares. If you create an environment where it just seems like you're having a good time, like, for me, it would, for example, if you go to my profile here, go to Nick D on the music, and I'll talk about this. I'll break this video down for you. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, keep going, 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 keep going. Coming up here soon. It's my, my fine apple So you've video. done a few of these then. Do you yeah. post daily on TikTok? I, I used to. Uh, all right, right here somewhere. All right, so a little more. Go to this video right here. Five million views. Yeah. All right, so this is my first video. So at the beginning of this video, I'm going to break it down for you and tell you why it went viral. So at the beginning of this video, I said, you know what I hate? I hate when people ask me how I like my water. It has nothing to do with, hey, listen to my song, right? What it did is a little controversy. You know what I hate? People are going to be like, oh, I wonder what this guy hates, you know? And then something a little light, they're like, water. And then I start singing, and then it goes into something catchy. And then I make a basketball shot behind my head, which gives them a dopamine hit. They're staying now. Uh, so I caught them at the hook at the beginning. The first three sections are, first three seconds are critical to catch somebody. Then you got to keep them. So how do you keep them? I made the shot behind my head, which was a fresh dopamine hit after the dopamine of, hey, this song's kind of catchy. And then... I'm singing and I'm talking in between the lines, right? Humanizing the the person that's singing the song, telling you, "Hey, I wrote this song for my, I wrote this, and you'll watch. I wrote this song for my wife. Now I'm a husband, which they can relate to, right? Just making myself a human being. And so, if you watch this video, yeah, let's watch it. 
my water. Like what? I like my water with lemon and lime. That's cause they're fair to combine. Kinda like us, you and I. If you want fruit, you be a fine apple. If you want word, you be the fine prick. <laughs> I like to try my hand to time travel Oh, you can walk by me again I just drain it <laughs> Yeah, I like this game, I need an ice ring I see your face whenever I blink You a Pisces, kind of sweet like the iced tea Southern kind, never undermine Never put your dreams under mine We a team and a thing, and we sang like a bunch of times Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over Man, it turned into a butterfly Two for two, two for two Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how many takes is that to make that basketball uh, show? Not long, three maybe. Three. Other oh, one, nice. other yeah. one took me a long. Oh, I did a microphone. I threw the microphone for one of them. Oh my goodness! Like that took far too many tries. So, so what you just microphone. what you just described is literally uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab 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 Right Hook. Okay, I You're, read it. <clears throat> it's a phenomenal book, yeah. but it's you talked about how. The, all the ads that you're not ads, all the posts that you skipped were the ones where it literally immediately goes straight into mm -hmm. the ask, like mm -hmm. this is what I am, mm -hmm. and you meet because I don't care. That's the right hook in the book. Jab mm -hmm. jab. You got to give value, give mm -hmm. value. Jab jab. Give the value, mm -hmm. give the value. Then you give them the right hook. Love it. It's a phenomenal uh, book, uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, it's somewhat outdated because it's mostly social media from like 2014, 2015. But there's a lot of great principles. But it's again, giving value, giving value. Then you go in for the ask. You notice what I did not do once there? Hey, this is my song. Right. Yep. Didn't say it once. Almost a million likes on that video. That this, song, guy did, this guy didn't like it. He said the fine apple line. Yeah. <laughs> You'll read a lot of those. You might need to change yeah, that. You'll read a lot of those. <laughs> uh, that's a negative. Someone who's not an artist probably. And another this dude's thing, voice is so soothing. <laughs> another wow. thing that I do is I never, like I'm never the guy that goes to the comment and says, find my song here, right? Mm -hmm. I wait for someone to ask, what's this song? I respond mm -hmm. to that comment because that's just somebody asking me. Yeah. I pin that comment of someone else asking me and me responding. This is a different level. Can you roast yes. someone? This is though? a different level. Like what Wendy's roast people on Twitter? How about that? You ever thought about that? <laughs> I don't be roast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that's like another level of not, telling someone right yeah one of the biggest things with my photography business when i started was let's say because i would always make myself available in my town i would walk around and i would always if you want to be interesting be interested so i would always go around and be interested in the other business owners i would never tell them about me if they ask like third visit right i buy something from them. Like, you've been coming with me what do you do mm -hmm. i'm a photographer now all of a sudden you're the guy that supported their business three times and they asked you what you did. And now when they need a photographer, you're going to be the guy. You didn't come in there and say, here's my card if you ever need anything. Right? Who cares? They got a bunch of those cards. And, and Unless you got a metal business card. then you know. <laughs> is, that, is that the thing? <laughs> well, well, we own a business called Lux Metal Card. This, got you, got this podcast you. is sponsored by Lux Metal Card. <laughs> um, no, we, we make metal <laughs> business on, cards. I'm not going to go on the whole pitch about <laughs> no, that. Yeah. But, uh, go buy my I'll, stuff. I'll show you what we do yeah, after, yeah, after yeah. this. But yeah, Go buy my stuff. Yeah, go, go buy my stuff. Tom Brady bought it. Yeah, so so if, yeah. if you could, <laughs> if you could, and this, this might be difficult, but if you could, uh, now that we've kind of discussed this, if you could give me like a three commandments, uh, of, of, of social media to your demographic, what would they be? Three commandments, huh? Well, I think one is what you Authenticity. talked about. I think well, well, not going straight for the ask. It's the, the jab, 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 yeah, right hook. Yeah, it's absolutely. giving value. Give value, be consistent, um, and yeah, humanizing it, right? Like, I think those are the three, and we we touched on them. And I think, because here's what people do: they've watched my and this other artist, they've watched my content, and then they mimic it, which is not authentic, because you can tell just by watching it's not something that mm -hmm. that that they would naturally do. Um, and then one thing, this is good for businesses. One thing is, because a lot of people, I'll I'll do it specifically to artists; they can apply it in their life. Um, a lot of artists are a little self-conscious, right? A little fearful, a little. Mm -hmm. So if I said, you know, like if you, for example, scroll a little bit, uh, scroll until that 17 million video. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So I'm going to touch on this. Um, Right there on the left. So if I said to an artist, hey, 
go into a coffee shop and sing your song. They'd be like, there's no way on earth I have the balls to do that, right? <laughs> like, there's no way Let's I'm going to put it. myself yeah, out there. Put, like this. just did this out of the blue. No <laughs> prepping. You didn't ask the manager or nothing? I asked the manager. Okay. Other than that, like, the, yeah, so go ahead and play it. Start it over. Start it over. Hey, excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah. Enjoy your day. Just wait a second. <laughs> I think it's her eyes, or maybe it's the way that 2. she wants to talk a song. I just can't decide. All I need to know is if you showed up here with somebody tonight. <laughs> if you didn't, then I'ma try to slide. I'ma try to slide eyes, or maybe it's the way that so. she walked a talk. Here's the part, right? right. I, I like, I like her reaction. She's is, like, is that, that what are you doing? Is that table? reaction authentic? Like, she's like, "What the fuck are you doing right now?" <laughs> that girl, look at that girl play that. And she's scoot. Yeah, just the one no. on the left. Watch her scoot back. Dude, that's no, <laughs> pause, pause. Look at, look, look at that facial expression on her. She's right like, she's like, what? She, and what's funny is she didn't get into it until she saw this girl try to take a selfie with you. That's <laughs> scary. She started bobbing her head a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, this guy's cool. This Maybe actually, I should get into it. This is actually a good song. <laughs> so if I, if I tell an artist, right, go in public and sing your song. Now, I'm not saying it's for everybody. Go sing it. I'm, what I'm saying is most people... It's a little out of their comfort zone. They're a little fearful. Um, but what if I said, I'll give you $100,000 to go sing your song in front of those people? They'll do it. They'll do it. This song has made me more than that. Wow. Right? Because you got to think of it like that. It's a little fearful to like, I don't want to do it. But if I said, I'll give you a hundred grand Ooh, to do it. That reminds me right? of something I just watched recently. is the, um, the ideology of risk versus reward. It's like we expect high victories with little suffering. Yeah. The the actual outcome is equal. Yeah. You have a lot of suffering you for that same amount of victory. So growth. yeah, comfortable. Like, it's that's like, a good one too. There's that one you've probably seen him. There's a DJ on YouTube. I think he's like in it's somewhere in Western Europe, but he has like this DJ unit that's attached to a strap on the vest. Oh, he goes and yeah. he live streams and yeah. he's walking mm. down the malls and he's like singing and huge loudspeakers. Having mall security chase them, but his videos are get like a million a pop go. on YouTube. But he live streams the whole thing. It's mm. hilarious. Yeah, uh, watching it. And there's but, a line for cringy. Right. And there's a line for just doing a little too much. Right. And it and it'll f go the opposite. You'll get no views because they're like, oh, they hate this guy. Right. So like the island boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an island boy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but those guys know. are cringy as hell. So you know who I'm talking about, Aaron? Okay. Replace go out in public with whatever's holding you back. Basically, did you sing the whole song in this, or did just you just a snippet? Just yeah, snippet. I always, I did that snippet. I mean, if you go this X out of this, so you were this, uncomfortable with this, right? No, I'm fine. <laughs> but, <laughs> so like this section of videos. So right here is a four million on this one, then another four, then a four point nine, then a seventeen. These are two different songs. They were both uh, on the top fifty most viral songs in the United States on Spotify at the same time. Both those songs were there. I've been on that chart three times, one with Fine Apple and with those two. Now, another thing does I want to touch on is that song I just did that dance for, Icy Pop. That song came out in September. If you scroll down some, uh, keep going here, uh, keep going right there, 7 million views. So that video, this song came out in September. I posted that video early January and... I was on a vacation for New Year's Eve with my family. I didn't have, I didn't Where you go at? out. I was in DC. I had this video in my drafts. Oh, okay. Uh, I've had that video filmed since September, and this is January. Is that done in Virginia? It looks like the Appalachian. Yeah, that's Mountain. Madison, okay. uh, Virginia. Um, so. Uh oh, car coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I'm on vacation. I don't have anything, but I want to post something. I go back in my drafts. The video had been sitting there for three months. I post it, and it does seven million views. Can you play it? If you showed up here with somebody tonight, if you didn't, same, then I'm same type of energy with the dance. Eyes, the so the dance became the thing. The that little I shuffle thing. Decide. That became the thing that like people waited for in the video to watch. They loved it. Now, I say it to say that song was in my <laughs> sorry the car, the car, car, car. <laughs> car, car, car. <laughs> that song was that video was in my drafts for three months. So a video that I didn't think was good enough. Because it was sitting in my drafts, but because I didn't have anything else to post, I posted it. Does seven million views. So I say that to say the thing that you think will blow you up, your business up, your song up, probably won't. And the thing that you're afraid to post probably will. Mm. 
Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. So what do you? What are some of the things that haven't worked uh, that have that have been underwhelming for you? And, uh, ha- and anytime I put effort into something. <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that. I'm standing in the middle of the street. Car, 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 car. car. So, <clears throat> going back to goals, then uh, from where you at? Do you do any like collab as far as from a music standpoint? Is that a goal? I don't do a ton. Have? I don't think about it much. Is I, there an artist you would love to do something with? That's the thing. I I I really respect artists more for how they carry themselves outside of music. I don't listen to a lot of music personally. Uh, if I have time to listen to it, I have time to create it. That's, so, interesting. that's interesting. interesting. Aaron doesn't yeah. watch videos, but he right. makes video makes content. Videos, yeah. It annoys the heck out of me. Because I'm like, dude, have you seen this movie? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, it, have any artists actually reached out to you to do something? So, like, I have a version of Fine Apple with Lil Yachty on it. Do you know Lil Yachty? Mm-hmm. I have a version of Fine Apple with a Lil Yachty verse on it, Lil Boat. Um, and he ended up inviting me to a studio in New York when he was working on his album, and I put a verse on it, so I probably won't make the cut, but... He's a little yachty, you know. But anyway, you you go up there and it has to be like label approved and all that. Um, so I doubt they're gonna like help out an independent <laughs> artist. Uh, anyway, I so like that came from independently through TikTok. Crazy, right? Lil Yachty DMs you on TikTok. Hey man, wow, wow, would love to put a verse slide on the into song. your DMs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have like a a dream collab. I don't. I honestly don't often see the value in a in a collab. So like when art artists will ask me, hey. Should I invest in the collab with this artist? I always say no because your money is better spent investing in your own songs, your own content, songs that you will own 100% of. Song because it all comes down to that budget, right? Like now, my budget per song, I like to keep it at 500 bucks, and I know that I need you know 100,000 streams or whatever to make that back. Um, now every song I put out does over a million streams typically in the first month, so it's like. I know I'm going to make that back, but I love to keep my profit margin up. Now, if I was to spend $20,000 on a feature from someone, now that song's got to do 5 million streams before I make that money back. So I just don't, I don't think it's worth it, you know, unless there's a, like a mutual respect between the artists and it's just like, hey, we'll split the revenue well, on this song 50 You don't think that the exposure of one song would bleed into your other ones and help you grow? those other songs and make money that way it does bleed um like if i had like when this song goes viral my whole catalog goes up right right like yeah, yeah that that happens but um, it's not beneficial enough to feature a song with somebody else i just don't see the enough value in it what yeah. <clears throat> there's no true definition sorry to cut you off there's Very no good. there's no true definition when it comes to what makes something viral but since you've had a lot of success with things going viral. What are the the key factors or the few things that you do that seem to hit those for like the perfect piece of content? There's no such thing as perfect right. content, but what gets that to? Yeah, what gets the people I, going? It's it's gets yeah, what gets the people, people going? going. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I I actually wrote uh, a whole write up on this for the course that I'm gonna put out, but um, I could probably pull it up and bullet point it. But basically, the first two three seconds are crucial. I, I mentioned that before. The hook. How do you hook somebody to be like, okay, I'll stay for a second. Now, for one of them, it's the, like, play the beginning of this video. Again, I don't mention my song. Make sure it starts at the beginning. So just play this. To be honest, just stop here because it's a beautiful evening. Right, nothing to do with my song. It's just like, they don't even know songs coming, really. And, pause it, that's all I wanted to show. So that little hook at the beginning. To be honest, just stopped here because it's a beautiful evening. And then they're like, wow, it really is a beautiful evening. It's <laughs> a nice know? shot. Yeah, it's <laughs> a, that is a nice shot. And then uh, and then it goes into a song. They're like, oh, okay. It was a little catchy. And then it goes into that cute little dance, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so this is not the prime example of like hitting all the bullets, but the little hook, the hook is crucial. How do you hook someone? And then how do you keep them? Usually... Uh, fresh dopamine hits right fresh little hits of something new um because if i was to just say that and then just sing the song and stand there i don't know if it does as good now when i do the little shuffle someone likes it enough it adds re rewatchability which is the biggest thing for the algorithm is somebody watches it twice um watch time audience retention those are bigger than likes and comments as far as uh the algorithm is concerned 
So go back to the final video. It's the basketball shot, right? That's so layer movie. layers. It has to. Now you can look at that video, that final video, and think, you know, uh, you can see uh, that it's viral. But understanding why it's viral will show you how to make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't copy other trends. You just right. And that's another thing. If there's already a trend, you're typically too late. So I don't. Mm. I don't. Uh, Has anybody trended your dance yet? They everyone started taking their laptop and focus right into public places. So now I can't do it anymore. So now I'm trying to figure uh, out the uh, next. Not to be a copycat, but to be yeah. genuine. Yeah. yeah, so now I have to figure out the next thing. Hmm. To be a trendsetter, not a... And uh, it's t it's not easy to and do, no, and not. you have to test, right? Uh, the one big thing was skits. Uh, skits is something that I don't think has gone anywhere yet, but I think it's on the way out, and I'll show you an example of a skit. Well, <clears throat> real quick, back yeah. back to that is uh, mostly what you see on TikTok and on Instagram. It's mostly people just duplicating, especially with dances. It's doing the same... Right. thing over monotonous thing and all, honestly with you know, TikTok and Instagram it's oh because you're hot that's the only reason why you're mm. getting views no <laughs> offense um, but it's you didn't create that dance or whatever right. or you didn't create that song so I, I, that just makes sense to me is just make your own shit yeah. up as and, you should and one huge thing so this is about Connor who is going to be here he has a TikTok account with I think 1.4 maybe 1.4 million anyway when I met him he had about 700k on TikTok, 50,000 monthly listeners on his Spotify. So not a lot, especially with a 700,000 yeah. following on a TikTok. He was doing a lot of remixes. He was adding uh, songs that weren't out, right? Just adding verses to a Drake song or to a, a whatever, another song. And he was going viral for that. But that only gives you clout. That doesn't give you it's conversion to your streaming. No money. Mm. No money. And that's the first thing I told him when I met him. He was like, how do I, you know, blah, blah. And I said, uh, start only promoting, promoting your original music. And when he did that, what, what is it? It's six months later. Um, he has 1.7 million monthly listeners. Actually, 1.9 million monthly listeners. It's life changing. Life changing. He makes now like twenty thousand dollars a month from <laughs> from Go ahead. from from his music. Um, hmm. And he he's in full control too. Full he, full control. But the biggest thing was converting those people over to the places that make you money, right? Because otherwise, it's just clout. that's your sales funnel. This is your marketing uh, platform, and your Spotify is e your product. Everything yes. we're talking about yeah. relates to every business. Yes, yeah. and that's the big thing. Yeah. Like, just switch out music, and it it's just like when we are talking to clients. Yeah, like they they're so focused on social media, on Facebook or Instagram or even LinkedIn. And at the end of the day, I'm like, what's your goal? It's like, oh, you want them to sign up for XYZ product or service. So we need to send them to your website. And your website looks like shit. Mm. Like, that's the whole point. So it's the reason why we make a huge emphasis on the website. If we can, Freshman Media, we build websites. Mm -hmm. And if your website can't convert, because that's your salesperson. Mm -hmm. It's your salesperson when you're not there. Mm -hmm. And if it looks like shit and the copy is shit, you will get nothing. Because, again, and that's the one thing that you do own. Because, again, you don't own these social platforms. Yeah. TikTok could be banned for all we know yeah. at the end of the month. you know. And there it goes. 1.5 million followers. I don't make money from TikTok. Yeah, that's my next question. Is yeah, like, does TikTok pay you? fund? Like, how I much never, do you actually never make signed up, up from that. No, I, thought no. they, up for really? I thought they, so they don't they just have it, it to? They have it. No, you have to You have to just opt in. Why Why not? What's the reason behind that? Uh, Just in case there's, like, a, oh, we're paying you now. You know, we're gonna take you out of the algorithm <laughs> just in case. Mm, ah. <laughs> just in case. Yeah, I've looked up um, some creators actually went on rants about the creator fund and how much little money they make yeah. or how little money they make. It's, it's now brand Shocker. deals. Not a lot. Brand deals on the other end. I did. A, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the brand, but I created a song, sixty second song. I mean, there's a have you already posted it? Yeah. yeah okay. Talk so about it. It was Hasbro. Oh. Uh, for Play Doh, right? I created a song for them, sixty second song, and two TikTok posts. Right, fifty thousand dollars, two TikTok posts, one sixty-second song. Now that's how you can make money with an audience, but that's not money from TikTok. Right, right? that's just from your audience. Yeah, the brand deal. Yeah, brand. so brand deals like that, you know, that's that's nice. Um, mm. what was the? Dang, I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> go somewhere with something. Else. Well, when when do you plan on launching this course? 
since you said you're still working yes. on it. Yes. Uh if you guys need help setting up a studio like you know, like this, we're more than happy uh, to help. <laughs> probably do. <laughs> but he's in Vegas. So um I definitely need one in Culpeper though. I'd love one. Um I think early September. September. I okay. think so. And then my book will come late a little bit after that. How do you plan on are you gonna do, essentially follow the same exact model then for are you gonna just create a separate TikTok so account? So we have a separate TikTok account. Great. Called independent. Uh and the goal is to just provide free value. And if people care enough to ask or find it, then the course will be available. And we have a free, right, newsletter that people sign up for. Will that have a podcast to that component too? Or there is a podcast to it. Okay. Uh, we we wrote we switched mostly to Q and A version of the podcast. We were having guests, and it just like some of the guests we were having, it wasn't so specific to. It wasn't providing as much value as a direct Q&A. I think Q&As are just more valuable. Like, how do I blah, blah? How do I blah, blah? We can just give our opinion on that very specific thing, and the questions are endless. Everyone always has a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it gives us unlimited content. We do 30-minute episodes, um, and we post the clips on TikTok. And, you know, it, it literally, like, maybe we started it maybe a month or so ago. There's 15,000 followers on our TikTok, but they're all independent artists. So it's a niche thing, right? You get those followers for such a niche, a niche thing that you can then convert them easier, right? Because there's, it's not, oh, that's another thing. Going to the, the, the reason Connor and his, his remixes, there's a question about an artist saying, uh, I only go viral when I post unrelated comedy stuff. Uh, should I create a separate account for my funny videos? And, I think you should because if you're getting people to follow you for your comedy, but your goal is to have people go stream your music, the people who are following you for comedy don't care about your music. A different you, audience. You yeah. really need, that's why I have two, right? I have my podcast page and you're I have my music page. You're just chasing clout at that point. Just clout. Mm -hmm. You're just like, who cares about going viral? You care about converting listeners over. There's something, but it's called the thousand fan rule. If you get a thousand true fans to give you a hundred dollars a year, whether that be going to your show or buying your album or streaming your songs enough or buying your merch, a thousand that's six figures off of music. And all you need is a thousand true fans. It's not a lot of people either. It's not hard. But they want again, it's the clout. It's yeah, just, they it's just that, look the that emotion you know? of feeling I'm famous yeah. or I've made it when in reality you haven't made anything. <laughs> You've made yeah. it there, but you haven't quotes, made it. Air quotes. There's no yeah dollars in the bank account that yeah. uh compare so so as far as platforms go people can find you on tiktok at yeah. i am nick d yeah. um and then your current podcast you have is called the fried friday is that freddy freddy freddy, freddy. freddy. Yeah. freddy feels, show can you go right do it can you click on that just so, so people freddy can show. see it yeah. and then uh they can find you on instagram at i am nick d yeah. and then find you on spotify at nick space yeah. d yeah. and of course yeah. same thing on and uh YouTube. on youtube yeah. but mostly that hair though it was it was, yeah, a, it was a yeah man bro. i i can't ever achieve that look when it comes to hair <laughs> i tried <laughs> i tried i got my hair down to my shoulders mm -hmm. yeah, uh, really? I, I couldn't keep it yeah. so I didn't do it mine was down in my waist wow yeah it yeah. was long i've never had that problem <laughs> <laughs> so, so um this pretty much wraps it up for the think fresh move forward podcast again thank you for coming yeah, on no making the awesome. effort uh, i wish we could have your your, your uh, boy over here but yeah, unfortunately yeah. he couldn't make it but cool. definitely love you have you back on once you launch the course and yeah. see how that yeah. goes so uh we do these podcasts every two weeks and uh see everyone in two weeks i see pop i forgot i'm steady trying to connect the dots la-di-da girl you got me working around the clock can't be stopped